because we have our area head and our mama in our midst. This is their fourth visit, but I think that per my calculation, this is the first official visit. His first visit was just to come this place and have a first-hand information what Mount View looks like. And the second one was pastors' uh, meeting. The pastors in the whole area were here for a meeting, and, and that was a great honor that was done us. The third one was the Kohinta program. Friday he was here, but that was on a zonal level. So the first official visit, which is the fourth visit, is today. Yeah. The first time I sat under his ministry was the year 2000 at Pensa ITI, Legon. Yeah. And we would say it was a normal money devotion. And that experience has been imprinted on my mind and indelible in. And since then, I have always admired him from afar. I thank God that he's ending his ministry here. So I am ever ready to catch a mantle. Ah, is somebody here to catch a mantle? Is somebody here to catch a mantle? Shout a big amen to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. May grace, peace, and blessing be upon this house. Amen. Your amen is feeble. Like our pastor has said, this is our first official visit to Mountain, Mountain View Worship Center. A very beautiful name, Mountain View Worship Center. Having taken over the leadership of the area, it is necessary for us to visit the various districts and appreciate the strength and uh, the spirit in each of the districts. And today, God being so good, is the turn of Mountain View, both English Assembly and the Key Assembly. You are blessed to have three pastors at a time in one place. So people don't see a pastor for a long time, but you have got three, and then two and a half of my miss. Also. <laughs> Hallelujah. So anytime you are coming to church, equip yourself that me too, I will do some. Me too, I will do some. And do some. Do some. Because in, the, in our church, we don't, we encourage all, all people to participate in the service. The English assembly has become necessary in the Church of Pentecost. It is necessary because of urbanization. Urbanization causes us to move from our villages and come to the cities. You move from your tiny culture and join uh, a mixed up culture, the culture of the city. You, you move from your language group and come to a different setting. And for some of us, Qi is not our main language. And we cannot articulate ourselves so clearly in Qi. Even if, even if we can hear it, we cannot uh, express ourselves fully in that capacity. So for most of us, uh, we need another language which can help us. And so the English Assembly has been provided to um, be a response of Pentecost to urbanization, where we can have a common language where many different cultures can express themselves in that particular culture. In a multicultural environment, the tastes of people differ. And the English Assembly provides that environment for a multicultural place. But the English Assembly is a normal Church of Pentecost Assembly whose um, language is not the local LNP or what, but is in English. It's like when we go to Bokrubite, there the language is Ga. So it's another worship uh, designed for the people group over there. Except that for us, the language is um, English. 
the PIWC is not just a worship center, it's a ministry. So the difference between English Assembly and the PIWC is that the PIWC is a special ministry towards multiculturalism. That is, they are designed to enable people from different cultures, international worship center. So you are a national worship center. They are Pentecost International. So they go across the board to bring in people of different cultures. So that you can have different colors, different cultures, and different, um, they have a mode of service that appeals to people who are not just Ghanaians, but people who are outside the Ghanaian periphery. So the difference, ours is national, theirs is what? International. And being international, theirs has become a ministry of the Church of Pentecost targeting towards um, targeted towards um, people from other nations who have come to join us. So they must make the place very friendly and able to integrate such people into our form of worship. And in the worship center, English and PIWC, um, English language appears to be a well-developed language. So um, it enables us to go deeper into the teachings of the word. So we are expecting that people within the English assemblies and people within the international worship centers will have a better understanding of the word than those in the traditional assemblies. That is, if I can preach um, in the assembly uh, for two days, I should be able to preach the same length of message in one day at the international or at the English assembly. So it's a place where you can download more. And people's growth in the Lord is measured by their understanding of the scriptures. So the more you understand, the better you are grown. So when we say maturity or Christian growth, we are referring, number one, to the person's understanding of the scripture. And two, the person's activity in spiritual issues. So what I'm concerned now is the person's what understanding of spiritual uh, of the scripture. Now, to get the understanding of the scripture, the pulpit ministry is very, very, very important. So this ministry, this um, uh, furniture is very, very important in the Pentecost or in the church experiment. Whatever we are doing as a church, the pulpit ministry is very important. From the pulpit, we either preach or we teach. From the pulpit, we either what preach or we teach. Now, when it comes to preaching, the Bible says, Go ye to all the world and preach the gospel. So, preaching is not for the church. Preaching is for the world. So, those of us who enjoy preaching, preaching actually is not for you. Preaching is for the world. Go ye to the world and preach the gospel. So by preaching, unbelievers become believers. So preaching is the ability to turn unbelievers to become believers. And you use a simple script, or a simple text, for God's all of the world, one verse. And then you dilate on them, you jump, you kneel, then you excite the people. So preaching brings excitement and people stand up and they say, Amen, I receive it. Uh, that kind of teaching, uh, it helps. So preaching is for actually unbelievers. But Jesus says, when they come, baptize them and teach them. So we teach people to become disciples. So as preaching makes unbelievers believers, teaching makes believers disciples. So it's a progression. So teaching makes believers disciples. So we must progress from preaching to teaching. But most of the time we mix it's good to mix up the two. Some, some people teach and preach. Others preach and teach. So it's a mixture of the two. But many people don't like teaching. But it is teaching of the believers that progress them into becoming disciples. So in the church of God, we need more preaching and we need more teaching than preaching. But a mixture of the two is good because within the Congregation, we have different levels of maturity, and some people need a measure of preaching, others need more of teaching. But by teaching, we are progressed. 
So the Bible says the word of God, we have the milk of the word and we have got the meat of the world. The milk of the word is preaching. The meat of the world is teaching. So children are given milk, but adults are given meat. So you need to um, remove your milk teeth for adult teeth, permanent ones. So you can be able to chew meat and crack it to bones. Then we say you are maturing. So as we mature, we must move from milk. Milk means what God can do for you. God can save you. God can protect you. God can do this. God can do that. God can do that. Anything God can do for you is milk. But teaching is what you must do for God. My responsibility towards God. Tithing, evangelism, righteousness. These things are teaching. These are meat. These are meaty words. But people like milky words. Uh, sweet ones. So anytime they are reading the Bible, they read the Psalms, they read the, the prophecies, Isaiah, Jeremiah, and that's where they like. But when it comes to teaching, the epistles of Paul and others, they are not so uh, anointed in those areas. But this is the area which is able to progress us into our faith. So by the English language, we are able to uh, articulate our thoughts. And, and uh, also bring the words that God has given to us to the people. So we thank God for this district or assembly having an English assembly which is uh, doing so well.